What is going on everyone? Nick here and welcome to the Las Vegas Raiders franchise rebuild. I've been wanting to do one of these for a little while and uh, I figured, you know, I'm going to wait for the scouting update. The scouting update is here. Um, and so I figured, you know, let's get a franchise going. And what, what timing in which Mr. John Gruden, Mr. Scumbag himself, gets all his emails leaked and he is... Uh, it says he was he resigned. We all know he was forced to resign. And now the Raiders have a coaching vacancy. Now, uh, I've talked about it a bit on the uh, channel prior and other videos, stuff like that. I am a diehard San Francisco 49ers fan. <laughs> I, have, I have grown up in the Bay Area. There's been the Battle of the Bay the entire time. Uh, and it was, it was a good time. I was a little sad to see the Raiders go to... Vegas, their stadium here was an absolute dump. Sorry, Oakland A's. Uh, but uh, it was sad to see them go because that rivalry is fun. It's fun to trash talk Raider co-workers at work and stuff like that. But I figured, you know what? Mr. Gruden's out of here. And uh, Mr. Bowl Cut himself saw my childhood photos and was like, damn, that kid had a bowl cut too. We're going to bring him in to lead the Raiders to victory. We're going to make us a team builder. And uh, yeah, I figured I figured this would be a fun little rebuild. I, the Raiders are an interesting team. They're they're half built for a rebuild and half built to kind of win now. But I don't think their win now players are good enough to win now. And so uh, we have an interesting build here. Uh, we're not we're not muscular. I, we're not that big, thankfully. Go base. Let's go. Uh, let's make us. There we go. Same hairline and everything. <laughs> it's not quite that bad, but. Yeah, we'll go with that one. We'll get him now. I'm also going to, if you are a Raider fan coming into this, I will talk trash. It is just ingrained in me as a Niner fan. Uh, but I do actually like the team for the most part. Um, you, there's some really good players on this team that I think, I guess we're just going to rock a polo. Yeah, we'll rock, we'll rock the red and gold or tan, I guess. Um, now offensive style, this is going to piss some people off. I'm going to play under the Shanahan system. We're going to pretend that I am a Shanahan disciple. And I think this works because Josh Jacobs is a monster. I love Josh Jacobs. Um, I'm excited to, to be able to have him on the team. And then for the defensive playbook, I was going back and forth on this. I think we're just going to use the Gruden playbook. Um, the team's currently a 4-3. They're basically built for that, I think. I did some messing around where I made them a 3-4 to see how it would go. And uh, I like I like the Raiders as a 4-3, I think. Um, definitely some work to do, but uh, the 4-3, I think, works. So we'll go ahead and accept and continue. we got Coach Nicholas Knack, who looks so old in that photo. Although it's better because some of the coaches look like childs. So that's a good time. And then this also says regular season week nine, but we are starting in week five, which actually just finished. They just haven't released that update yet. I thought they'd do it with the scouting thing, but they didn't. So, and that that's okay though. We'll go ahead, go through here. So the plan also is that I'm not going to play the full games. I'll do the play the play the moment stuff. So that's a little bit quicker. So we're not sitting here watching gameplay forever. Um, Cause this is more about the rebuild. And if you guys want me to not even play the games, just simulate them um, and go in and watch some plays and stuff like that, I can do that too. But uh, we'll start off, we'll be playing some stuff. So let's see, let's turn off. I don't have a pre-roll bonus, but just in case that messes with anything. I'm also bad at the game, so I'm going to leave it on all pro. Um, you'll see once we get in <laughs> that that is an appropriate skill level. Uh, we'll do trade type. Okay, yeah, enable all. CPU only. Yeah, we don't really want to get fired. Salary cap, everything should be on. Uh, I'm going to keep all the injuries on, since, especially since we're starting week five. We'll keep pre-existing injuries on. The only problem is that this will cause... Um, this will change up the results of week five. So, sadly, you know, some of those games may not be... May not be the same. Which, you know, that's, that's a bummer, but oh well. Wait, set to on, you'll be able to control all players on the team, and you can super sim at any point, similar to coach and owner mode. Oh, that's if you're in player mode. Oh, okay. That's cool that you can turn that off, actually. I haven't played much of it, because I, I like the old games where you could play... You played just your player, you didn't get to call the plays, and you just, you just went. 
I thought that was fun. Uh, no restrictions on that. Breakout scenarios will keep. Development trait regression will keep. Um, let's see. Yeah, this is fine. Quarter length will do uh, 12 minutes. Just because if we do the full 15, sometimes the stats can get a little crazy. So we'll do 12 minutes. We'll do full control of everything. We'll turn tutorials off. We'll turn full roster off. And we'll keep everything as is. All right, let's jump into this. I wanted to make sure I showed that part just in case there are questions later about what settings are. It could be like, just watch episode one, <laughs> please. Why are you watching episode six and asking me about the settings? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so just out of the gate. So, oh, we can choose a draft class. We're just going to do auto generated rookies. Um, I don't follow college football super closely. Once it gets close to draft, I start doing dives on players, especially any ones that could potentially be niner picks. But um, for the most part, I'm not a huge college football person, so we'll do some auto-generated rookies. And I took us straight to the new scouting. Now, I actually quite like this. So we get we get a prospects board. We get top 10. We got a lot of QBs, which is potentially something we're going to be looking at. Actually, before we look at the scouting, let's go, let's go check out the actual team we have before we start looking into the future. We'll check out this team. So I think it's, a, it, like I said, I think it's an interesting team. I don't think it's a great team. I think it's, it's middling at best, but it's interesting. So right out the gate, I want to generate my best lineup. There we go. Let's change some stuff around. So we have the big one. We have Derek Carr, right? I have always been the belief that he is someone in that same tier as your Kirk Cousins, your Jimmy Garoppolo's, your kind of Philip Rivers is kind of like the top end of this tier of like those quarterbacks that, you know, they're not really going to win you many games, but they're also not going to lose you many games. And so like, as we saw with Jimmy G, if you have a stud team around him, he can make it to the Super Bowl. But as we also saw in the Super Bowl, he wasn't going to win them that Super Bowl and they needed him to. So I think Derek Carr falls in that same field. I think he's also in his 30s. Yeah, he just turned 30. He has two years left on his contract. I think he is somebody we could look to replace in either this upcoming draft or the next one. Uh, Josh Jacobs, absolute monster. Love him to death. Loved him coming out of college. Was so sad the Raiders got him. <laughs> uh, but he is he's a stud. He'll be our premier back for a while. We also have Kenyon Drake, who... He's fine. He's fine. He's a little speedy dude. He's a good one-two punch with Josh Jacobs. So that should work out pretty well. We also have Hunter Renfro. Everybody's favorite slot receiver. He'll be our slot receiver for a long time, hopefully. Uh, Henry Ruggs, I'm excited to play with. He's a speedster. Good deep threat. Uh, didn't quite have the best rookie season, but he should have a better season this year. And then we also have Will Sneed, but I'm going to put Brian Edwards above him in our lineup just so that Brian Edwards gets some more play time. Because, I mean, he's only 22. I think he has some decent potential. And, you know, we could, we could try to work on him. He could be somebody we keep long term. Uh, outside of that, we, of course, have Darren Waller, who's an absolute monster. Not quite a Kittle or a Kelsey, but I, I like him regardless. Um, not quite the blocker, but still very good. And, then of course, we have uh, Fort? No, Foster. I always mess that up. For some reason, I want to say uh, Forrest Moreau. It's Foster Moreau. And I actually quite like him as a second tight end. I think he's someone who can develop a bit. We could run two tight end sets. Because we have, what is it, Alec Ingold? Yeah, we have Alec Ingold, who's fine. That looks nothing. <laughs> oh, my God. Fullbacks ain't getting no face scans. But uh, he's good as a, as a fullback for sure. And, I mean, in the Shanahan system, we will use our fullback. So he'll get some decent playing time. Um, but we'll also look to get Foster Moreau some, some good time as well. Now, <laughs> I feel like two, three years ago, the Raiders had, like, arguably one of the best offensive lines in football. What happened? <laughs> Other than, uh, what was this? Colt Miller. Other than Colton Miller, this offensive line is pretty trash. Uh, Colton Miller will be our left tackle for as long as we can keep him. Alex Leatherwood, their selection this year in the draft, was taken early. And 
has that's kind of been the reflection. That's kind of the the Raiders MO though. It's like they just take players really early and then they just kind of you know, they're just kind of there. If <laughs> they don't quite live up to the draft spot in which they picked them, like Alex Leatherwood, Cleland Farrell, um, even like Arden Key back. I mean, I'm happy he's on the Niners now because now he's finally balling. But uh, Arden Key was like a weird reach as well. So it's like they, they have a history of that. And Alex Leatherwood's no different. If he can't develop, um, he might just be a backup tackle for us for his career. Um, outside of that, I mean, you have John Simpson who he's young as well. Like that's the good thing is this whole line's young. But the problem is they're still all 70s and under <laughs> like Nick Martin. He's a long snapper. We'll, we'll keep him, but we'll look to replace him as far as starting offensive line. And then uh, Jermaine can't even pronounce his last name. He's also in that same boat of being young so he could develop, but he'll probably end up a backup or he'll just be let go when his contract is up and the backups aren't looking any better. Really no good backups except for Brandon Parker. Who's young, who can, you know, that's a fine backup. Kind of looks like James Harden in, <laughs> in that uh, little thing. But yeah, the, the big thing is figure out what we want to do with Derek Carr, progress these wide receivers, and then just we, we need a full overhaul of the offensive line. That's going to be the biggest things we need. Now, defensively, it's a bit of a different story. I kind of like the Raiders defensively, even though they don't perform particularly well. Like, the young corners of uh, Damon Arnett and Trayvon Mullen. Is it Tra Yeah, it is Trayvon Mullen. Yeah. I, it, I love them as a pair going forward. Even Casey Hayward Jr. is not that old. Hey, he's 31. Um, he's someone who can kind of be our anchor for a bit while uh, Arnett and Mullen kind of, you know, get into their own, essentially. Um, Safety-wise, also absolutely love... Uh, Trayvon Morig and Jonathan Abram. Like, that is such a fun safety team or safety tandem um, that hopefully we can keep basically forever. <laughs> I loved Abram coming out of the coming out of the draft, and I actually really liked him his rookie season where he was just laying absolute hits on people. Uh, that was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, so hopefully he develops into a good stud strong safety for us. Uh, their linebacking core, KJ Wright's great, but he's old. He's in, his, he's in his early 30s, so look to move on from him pretty soon. Nick Kwiatkowski is good, but again, he's a little on the older side. And this is where, this is where that you have all these like really good sub-25-year-olds, and then you have your Kwiatkowskis, your KJ Wright, your Casey Hayward, your Derek Carr, all who are in their 30s, kind of, you know, the, the timelines don't quite match up for them. And so you may look to try to get, try to replace like a KJ Wright. Kukowski, by the time you get this team really going, he could be in his early 30s, so that could work out. Um, but KJ Wright may be somebody we're looking to replace at some point. And we do have Perriman coming off the bench. He could be someone that could slot right in and work at left outside linebacker. We want to get rid of KJ Wright. Or Corey Littleton, who I think they're paying way too much, could also be somebody that we get rid of. Uh, I think he's owed like... He's owed a fat contract next season, I believe. I remember when they signed him, I was like, what? <laughs> oh, we did edit player. Uh, let's not do that. Let's go to was it stats and contracts. Because I want to see, I, if I remember correctly, he has like a ridiculous contract. That's going to be a decent cap hit for us. Yeah, so he's going to be getting 15 mil next year. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> He's someone we'll probably look to get rid of. We'll probably look to trade. And speaking of trades, the D-line, in which I think they did one of my least favorite moves of the entire offseason, and that was Yannick Ngakwe. He, he's someone who's, like, middling at best. Like, he's never quite hit that full potential. And as far as his contract goes, he's getting a little bit too much, in my opinion. He's like Littleton, where they just signed him to a fat contract because they had a lot of cap space. But I think signing him, A, was just like, okay, you're paying a lot to a mediocre player. But you're also stunting Cleland Farrell. Because now he's coming off the bench. You know, you didn't really reasonably have Super Bowl aspirations. 
And so I think Yannick Ngakwe is someone that we can trade along with Littleton to try and get some either young people or some picks. Because I think I think the way we want to take this team is the rebuild. Like I think as as good as some of the older players are with Hayward and KJ, I think in general you want your team to kind of line up with Mullen, Arnett, Morig, Abram, Josh Jacobs, uh, Henry, Henry Ruggs. Like, all those players need to be, you know, that's your core. So let's build around that and go forward and let everybody progress together kind of thing. So uh, we're definitely going to we're gonna throw Yannick on the trade block now. See if we can get somebody to bite on that eventually. Uh, Cleland Farrell... Uh, he, I think he's listed as right end. We're going to make him a left end so that he gets the... Actually, now that I think about it, none of our corners and none of our safeties are a scheme fit. Like, what scheme are we running? We're running a 4-3 under. I think if we run a base 4-3, which might work better uh, under this... There is zone... We need to make that... Wait, wait, what was Shanahan's thing? I want to match it. Zone run West Coast. There we go. So we, we have a 59% on here. It does require an elusive back. We could go... Let's see. We could go a power zone run or a West Coast power run. But it does take the agile. And we are looking to revamp our entire offensive line. So this could be good. The only thing is the elusive back. Hmm. Although going power back, West Coast power run, could potentially be a bit better. Let's see. Do we want to just go for the zone run and this is what we're going to build towards? I think this is. I think this is how we're going to do it. Yeah, we're going to keep that. And then for the 4-3, the where is my base? Yeah, so base 4-3, it puts our safeties as man-to-man. -man. It gives us our speed rush in the right end still. Yeah, I think this is... We want to go base 4-3. So let's get us a base 4-3 playbook. Let's see. We do have the Sean Payton playbook. Which also gives us the 46 formation. Which isn't terrible. Let's rock Sean Payton's defense and Shanahan's run. Or Shanahan's playbook, which is run. <laughs> We're going to rock that. Um, we'll, we'll make this team fit that mold. I think is the plan. Because there's some of these guys that we can change. Like The only one we're not going to be able to change is Colton Miller. Um, but I think he's such a good tackle that that's fine. He'll still fit enough just because he's good. And then we do have a couple players who are, you know, good. Josh Jacobs doesn't get the, the um, what's it called? The scheme fit bonus, but I don't think he needs it. Um, and plus, you kind of always want a one-two punch anyway. So, like, even the Niners in real life have that with Sermon and Mitchell. So, we'll take that. Defensively now, we have a lot of people who have... We have Cleveland Farrell does get the bonus. I do want to... If we go generate best, does it change anything? No. I kind of want Cleveland Farrell to play over Yannick Ngakwe. Let's see. Oh, and I guess we didn't talk about Jonathan Hankins or Solomon Thomas. Jonathan Hankins is fine. Um, I thought about making him a nose and a 3-4, but we just don't have the personnel for that. And Solomon Thomas, as a Niner fan, he's somebody who... God, I wish we didn't take. <laughs> and even in this, it's like he's 26, he's a run stopper bench player for his career essentially he'll come off the bench um we'll look to replace him on the d-line soon um, i'm also actually gonna put Corey littleton on the trade block see if we can get somebody for him and then we could always move perryman over to right outside linebacker um but yeah i like this a bit more we want feral we'll, we'll go we'll, we'll change Farrell in a second of course specialists we have cole and carlson both the carlson's great Cole's fine. We have Kenyon Drake returning punts, which is, you know, good enough. We'll take that. <laughs> Probably look for somebody better in the future, but we'll take that. 
Uh, as far as our specialist goes, we have our nets, our slot, which hopefully he's just our slot for a long time. Um, why is it? That's weird that Cleveland Farrell is a defensive tackle in the 3-4. Uh, the um, or not the 3-4, but when we have three linemen. But we have Max Crosby, Farrell, and Duncan Gokwe. Well, eventually this right end will probably be Farrell, and it'll probably be Thomas being in the middle. But uh, And then we, of course, have KJ Wright as our sub linebacker. We have Kukowski here as well, which... Eh, if Kukowski was younger, I'd put him up. But at 28, he's not going to progress that much anyway. So that's fine. Then we have our power halfbacks, Jacobs. Our third down running backs, Kenyon Drake. And, of course, we have the the out of nowhere anomaly man hunter renfro <laughs> at slot receiver and our practice squad is kind of whatever don't have anybody too crazy except for whims who's on here listed as a qb i don't know why because he's a receiver uh, but he's someone who you know is fine but we're not gonna we're not gonna bring up or anything and uh yeah that's gonna be that's the team we're rocking we have we have a lot to to get to so let's first go in here, and I want to make Cleveland Farrell my starting right end. We'll let Ngakwe be the backup. Where is it at? Oh, right end. KJ Wright can also be a decent, decent right end, which is hilarious. We are going to keep Carl Nassib. I like Nassib. He's a good player. We're going to make him our backup left end. Bam. There we go. All right, Carl's an asset. Ma um, Max Crosby. Who, Max Crosby's good. Um, I like him. White is a ghost. <laughs> but I like him. And then, uh, yeah, we have... Uh, we'll take uh, Nassib. Now, let's, let's... We can finally... Now that we've gone over the roster, let us actually do some scouting and try to figure out what we want... Like, let's check out... So, QB. This is such a QB-heavy class. Like, let's check out... So, just QB-wise, we have... Four top five projected QBs. We have... What was that? One, two, three... Day two, potentially, QBs. Potentially day one. And, you know, that that's fine because that's someone who can progress under Derek Carr for a year and then take over. Or if we grab one of these guys, we don't necessarily have to get rid of Carr right away. It just might be in our best interest. QB is definitely going to be something we want to look at. Um, but I think kind of overall, it's not going to be our big, big focus. Our big, big focus has to be O-line. And left tackle's fine. Our guard situation, we have one round one guard. That's not great. Center-wise, not a single... Not a single day one and only three actually draftable centers. Right guard, couple round ones. Okay. And a single day two. And then right tackle, we have a round one, a couple of round one and twos. We could also look... Just go to left tackle. Oh, there's not a lot, but could always switch one of them to right tackle. No real problem with that. We also want to look at defensive tackle, where we have a couple of round ones, a couple of uh, mixed day one, day two guys. So all stuff we want to look at. Left outside linebacker. Um, just backer in general should be something we're looking at. So like middle linebacker, because we can always switch them to one of the outside positions. And of course we have this Peter Holman who's a top five. The only thing I don't like is it doesn't say his type. And so like committing to him, like if we look into him and he ends up being a speed rusher at a four state, it's like, okay, so he's really a defensive end for us. And so it's kind of, it feels like a little bit of wasted search on him. Corner will be fine for a while, but I kind of always want a corner scout. And safety, we don't really need to worry about for a while. But, uh, but yeah, that should be. I mean, we we have we have some things we can target. We can go to scouts. This is the fun thing where they have a bunch of scouts. And the fun thing, I, or the thing that I thought was really cool, is they have Charles Woodson is our national scout, <laughs> which is awesome. Uh, he is scouting corners, which isn't the biggest need for us. Um, I'm gonna let that roll this year, just because I think that's kind of fun. Um. And, you know, we can grab, we, we still have room to grab corners. We can grab somebody or replace Casey Hayward. 
um, or just build depth. That's always it's always nice. Our left end, right end situation. I don't actually think we need. We're actually gonna fire. Oh, we can't. I, okay, that's that's my problem. Is that because the scouting thing came in late? You're kind of stuck with these scouts. You just end up kind of stuck with them. But it's not it's not too bad. Um, you just run into a situation where. You know, you maybe would like some other stuff and you just can't get it. But uh, we do have, so we have the West get being scouted for QB. Which, you know, is fine. We, we might, hmm. If we don't get a good QB in this draft, our next year, we'll make our national scout QB based. So that we can find ourselves a good QB. But right now we're just doing the West, which has Jason Walner from Oregon. And uh, hopefully that one ends up okay. Strengths corner, wide receiver, right guard. That's cool that shows strengths and weaknesses, so you kind of have an idea of what to who to send here. Northeast has quarterback. Yeah, there is two of the good quarterbacks in here. And then the southeast has corner, quarterback, strong safety. Yeah, so sadly our quarterback scout isn't in the most ideal location. <laughs> But that's okay. Let's see. Actually, can we... Yeah, we can't change him at all. Which is a bit of a bummer. Like, their, their stuff's locked in. So that this, the full scouting thing is going to be something we have to check out in our next season. But for now, this should be okay. We have a... Like, Jason Waller. He, I mean, Walner, he's 6'5", 222. Top fits are Tampa the Steelers in Washington. Let's see. He's a calculated risk. Take calculated risk as a passer. Beautiful spiral. Calm but aware defenders while in the pocket. Knows when to throw the ball away. Will break the pocket occasionally and throw fast. Uh, shot put style. Three quarter motion. So his acceleration's elite. His agility is great. Change of direction's elite. So this could be a very good mobile quarterback his awareness is a his carrying is d okay and we'll we'll slowly unlock his traits over time so let's let's add him to our favorites let's see darius mcphee is someone who is let's check him out his top fits are tampa arizona and san francisco maintain poise at the catch point motors always running hot often looks to rip the ball from runners Typically avoids getting flagged. That is great. And he has B man coverage. Okay. So already interested in him. And we'll... Nope, did not mean to do that one. I meant to do Darius McPhee. And we'll get a better idea once we start getting some of these guys more scouted who we want to add to our favorites. But for now, we'll keep, we'll keep Darius and Jason and kind of see how that goes. So we have all that taken care of. We have a couple of people who are on, who are ready to negotiate. Let's see how that this goes. We have Richie Incognito, who is injured right now. I forgot we had Richie. I'm honestly going to let him walk. He's 38 years old. We're looking to rebuild the offense anyway. I, he's someone that we can let walk, and it'll be fine. Casey Hayward. Probably want to bring him back for at least one more year. Yeah. Yeah. We might want to wait until he... We're going to sign... We're going to deal with him at the end when he regresses. Same with KJ Wright. We'll see how far they regress. And where we go from there. Jonathan Hankins. That's very cheap for a one-year deal. He is also our best D-tackle. So, there we go. We bring Jonathan Hankins back for one more year. AJ Cole. We'll absolutely want to bring him back. And we can. Let's get you on a four-year deal, Mr. Cole. Hell yeah. Okay, we got our punter for the next four years. Alec Ingold. Do we want to give a fullback 10 mil? It is over three years. It's not that bad. He is 25, so he matches up. Let's do it. We'll rock Alec Ingold. And Willie Sneed, somebody we're probably going to let walk. Gerald McCoy, who I completely forgot the night or the Raiders have, is uh, we're gonna let walk. <laughs> Carlson will bring back. 
Solly, we'll see how he plays. Jalen Richard, we'll see how he plays. Quentin Jefferson, uh, probably let him walk. Same with Zay Jones, Peyton Barber, Nicholas Morrow. I when he came out, I had a lot of high hopes for him. We'll probably end up bringing back Nick uh, Nick Martin. Mariota probably get sh let go. Yeah, a lot of these guys are gonna get let go. Oh, Derek Carrier's still here. Yeah. All right. And Peterman, we're absolutely not keeping. <laughs> there's not a chance in hell. Let's do weekly strategy. I like that there's a lot to kind of manage in franchise now. And it, it feels it feels like it's good. Like it's, it's a nice kind of thing to have to deal with. Makes it a bit more fun. So let's see. So top threat's Mon Montgomery, who does want to bounce it to the outside. Yeah, I think we do just keep defend outside run. That should be fine. Our offensive game plan. Let's see. Blitz counter. Yeah, I mean, they are number... Or, he's huge in sacks. We definitely want Mac. It wasn't say... There's no way he has 15... Maybe it's as a team they have 15 total sacks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's 15 total sacks. So, yeah, we do want blitz counter. They do bring the pressure. So let's go. Yeah, we'll rock... We'll rock blitz pressure. That's fine. And then team profile. See, I wish I could change this. I don't know how to change... The, uh, the focus players. I mean, Trayvon Morg and Leatherwood are fine, but Glipsy is not somebody who I really want to be my focus player because he's not somebody who's going to get substantial playing time above Jonathan Abram. Like, I'd rather have Abram be my focus player. We get Carr, Peterman, Mariota, all the... everybody. Everybody's getting some stuff. <laughs> we'll take our passive little bonuses. We get one upgrade. Who do we got? Oh, we get actually two. We get Foster Moreau and Nicholas Moreau. Wow, that's... <laughs> that's wild. All right, so Foster, we're going to keep him as a possession boy because that's the scheme fit, and also I think that's just where his skill set lies. He's not really a, D, a vertical threat tight end. So that's fine. He's someone we will want for a while. And then, of course, Nicholas Mara will go ahead and give field general. He is somebody who, if we let go KJ Wright, I'm fine with him taking over the role as like the main backup middle linebacker and letting Perriman switch over. Um, you know, because he, he's, he's good enough to to justify letting him play there. But, uh, but yeah. Uh, oh, we didn't look over staff. Let's check out staff real quick. Staff-wise, we got Rod Starling, who is, who is a West Coast Power Run guy. Which we could, eh, it's fine. We, we, he wants three passing TDs. His talent tree-wise, he has... Equip X Factors on offensive line and boost impact blocking for fullbacks, which that's actually pretty good for what we what we want to do. Royal Walker, he has X Factors on defensive lineup, uh, boost tackle for linebackers, and then he has boost injury rating for all defensive players and boost recognition for free safeties slash strong safeties. I will take that absolutely. And of course, with us, we do not have anything except for Secret Remedy right now. Which is fine. Alright, let's jump. Let us, I think we're finally ready to jump into this game. And not every episode is going to be this drawn out. It's just, you know, gotta, gotta set the, set the, you know, how things are going. And what we're thinking about doing with the team. We are going to jump in here. We'll be the Las, we're the Las Vegas Raiders. Now in real life, they, we lost this game. We actually got dominated. <laughs> so, you know, if we lose, at least it's faithful to what happened in reality. If we win, hey, that's okay. It's one game. It's not going to make us Super Bowl contenders out of nowhere. We are three and one. I forgot about that entirely, but I don't. This is a team that falls off every year. So I don't think that's something that we're going to put a ton of stock into. Oh, let's, why is this so fast? 
Defense needs our help. Let's jump in. We'll slow that down in a in a second. Let's see. Two and five. Oh, they're in the other oh, in the red zone. All right. Let's do. Uh, yeah, we'll rock. Rock us a little blitz action. Was Max not Max Fry? Who's blitzing? Somebody. Oh, there we go. Got a big stop. We don't have announcers on, which I might change. I've I haven't decided whether or not I want them or not. Yeah. It, oh, I forgot. Rugs was injured. I totally forgot that was the thing. That's okay. Let's do. Let's bring some more pressure. I'm bringing Quickowski. Oh no, we're bringing right in. Okay. Oh, bad. <laughs> I switched. It switched. It switched to the wrong player. That's okay. Darnell Mooney gets a big touchdown. I am not the best defensive player. We also can we change. Big third down, make the stop. Okay, hold on. We need to... Let's skip the moment. Let me put this on normal speed. Jesus. All right. So we got... Actually, what I want to do... We're going to do it jump to next play. We'll go play by play so we can kind of control it. Chicago did get a field goal. Josh Jacobs run the ball. He's still pounding the rock, which is what we want out of him. Yeah, we'll just let him pound the rock forever. Get another five yards. They can't stop him. Darren Waller gets a big catch for first down. Jacobs continues. <laughs> just continues to absolutely dice up the Bears defense, which is great. Kenyon Drake getting a bit of time. We got third and two. And we convert with Josh Jacobs, a big run. See, I am fine with this style of play where it's just like, just hand the rock to Jacobs. If, you know, ooh, Colton Miller taking us back on third and 12. And we get a touchdown. Brian Edwards gets the big touchdown. We'll take it. We will absolutely take a Brian Edwards touchdown. The extra point is good. Kickoff. Got a short return. Dave Montgomery gets hit in the backfield, which is always great. Justin Field to Jaheim Grant, though, for first. The David Montgomery decides he's going to slash us back after watching Josh Jacobs run the ball the entire first quarter. Again, two-yard loss, but then they immediately get him back. Justin Fields, who I I like a lot. I was uh, he was somebody who I wouldn't have complained if the Niners drafted. But uh, ooh, 24 yards. They're on the six. Should we jump in try to help this out? Let's do it. Let's jump in try to help out a bit. Let's get Max Crosby coming in here. We're playing a little bit of zone. Hopefully, it works out for us. Oh, the big sack. Let's go. Cleveland. Is that? No, that's Yannick. Yannick and Gawkway on the sack. Okay, we'll take it. Let's do some cover. Do some cover to man. Try to get some sacks with Max Crosby. Ooh, a little late. Oh, little off was that Kwiatkowski could not keep up. And Williams gets the touchdown. That's okay. That's okay. We'll go ahead, go back to key moments. Let this go a little quicker. They get the extra point, 17-7. Getting the ball with seven minutes left in the half. Zay Jones return man. Hopefully that doesn't mean Kenyon Drake got injured. As Josh Jacobs decides to, he's just run the ball down their throat forever. I, I am looking, I haven't adjusted any of the sliders or anything like that. So I know the lead backs stay in for quite a while. Um, that's something that I may look to change just so that they can, there's a bit more of, um, you know, fatigue plays more of a thing. Nick Martin goes down. That's not ideal. We already have a bad offensive line. Let's try to get this third down. It's third and four. Ooh, I like the bench curl dig here. I'm really liking Renfro. If he gets loose, I'm good. But honestly, I'm liking Foster Moreau on this little out. And we don't get either of them. But we do get Willie Sneed. <laughs> I, that's something I'll have to do is I'll have to learn the numbers. I know the players, I just don't know their numbers. So we'll uh let, let's try to let's try to punch it in here. Let's try to get us a big punch in. We're gonna get a good good run with Kenyon Drake here, hopefully. Oh, hits the hole. Let's go. Nine yard run. Or are they gonna give me a ten yard run? Oh no, nine yard run, okay. I like that. I like the one yard because now we have a chance at 
kind of doing anything, and I like the idea of a screen off to Kenyon Drake here. Although, do I? Ooh, we're going to see how this goes. Let him pop out. Get the lob. Oh, he did get the first down, though. Did he stretch for the first down? He did. Okay. Let's see if we can just punch it up the gut with Jacobs. Let's get Foster Moreau over here. Just one more blocker. Josh Jacobs fights his way forward to the one. I'll take that. And let's just let him, let's let him try to punch it through. I want to feed this man the ball as much as I can. Just power your way through. There you go. Spike that ball, Jacobs. He is somebody who I hope just to have thousands of yards. <laughs> he is someone that I'm just going to feed the rock to as much as I can. And now Justin Fields gets a two-minute drill. I believe uh, we get it at the end of the at the start of the ha at the start of the second half. So we make that we get them to do a, a three and out. I like this. Let's do a two-minute drill. Let's see what Derek Carr can do. Let's get him with a little sale action. I try not to pick my own plays too much because it's easy to exploit that. I'm really liking either Edwards or oh nope 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 overthrown so bad by Derek Carr. No pressure, just could not get it there. Willie Sneed on that uh, that vert route could be the a answer. Let's see. I think it is. Going deep. Willie Sneed, aggressive catch. Brings it down, Willie Sneed. What a catch. Derek Carr absolutely bailed out there. But uh, that was beautiful. Let's see now if we can uh, get Waller out here on this little out route we can maybe yes we can let's go Waller okay there we go a very well done two minute drill got honestly super lucky Willie Sneed came down with that ball uh, but you know he did so it's okay we did and it's nice we do take the lead right before the half although Alan Robinson with a big catch another big one from Jimmy Graham but they able to tack on three. Okay. They tack on three. We come in here. We got a one-point lead going at the start of the third. And we're back to the Josh Jacobs run game. And Darren Waller. <laughs> That's really all we have. And, of course, Willie Sneed making that amazing catch. Do we want, We're not going to take this third down. We're going to let them go for it. We're not going to do every single one. Derek Carr picking it up on his legs. We'll take that. We'll take that. Oh, Josh Jacobs finally gets stopped in the backfield for the first time. Let's try to get this a third and eight. Ooh, let's, yeah, let's rock inside attack. I like this. I'm liking Renfro. Do they bring pressure? Yes, uh, no, they don't. Ooh, don't like this at all, actually. Nope, gotta get rid of it. <laughs> I'm not throwing a pick. And for a second, we had Renfro. Uh, we also had uh, Waller for a second there. But uh, just just wasn't wasn't what I wanted. Big field goal kick. They had a, they had a defensive penalty. We're in field goal range, and Carlson drills it to put us up by four. Very nice. We got touchback. How are we looking on defense? Allen Robinson's still a problem for us. But Montgomery, we're able to stop. Allen Robinson once again. <laughs> That's something that I think the Raiders need. The Raiders need a true number one. I think Henry Ruggs is a nice complimentary receiver. But if they can get a number one, that could be a huge help for them. And I mean, it is what they were going for when they tried to get Antonio Brown. Or they got Antonio Brown, but then he left. Um, and I think that's still something they need. Just like a big body goes up and gets it. Receiver. Uh, let's go. We'll try this third down stop. Let's rock, uh, rock some cover one. Bring in a bit of pressure. Let's get Morg over here. Oh. Oh. Justin Fields. I went for the hit stick. I shouldn't have. <laughs> I was like, oh, Kwiatkowski's going to get you. But no, he got juked out of his shoes. Let's let them handle the red zone. See how it goes. David Montgomery gets the big run. Jimmy Graham goes up to the three. Montgomery to the one. Do they punch it in? Yes, David Montgomery punches it in. The Bears take the lead.
with a minute 50 left in the third. Now what can we do? Ooh, Derek Carr takes a nine yard sack. Josh Jacobs gets a three yard, third and 16, nothing. That's gonna be a punt, not ideal. Not how we needed that one to go. Darnell Mooney getting involved. Mooney's someone who I think is, is someone who I think could like really shine in the next couple of years if the Bears get rid of Nagy. I think Nagy's holding that team back quite bad. But Montgomery just absolutely gashing us. Knocked away by Marg. Damian Williams finally getting involved. But Montgomery just continues to get us. We cannot stop this man. Second and eight. Gets five yards from Williams. Can we stop him? Third and three. No. Williams gashes us for some yardage. Let's see if we can help them get out of this. We probably can't. But let's go for it. It's weird. What a weird little lineup we got going. Oh! <laughs> Everybody's just going for it. Bouncing off of everybody. Not the most ideal thing in the world. It, see, it has all our game plan stuff as zone stuff, but we're not a good zone team. We're a better man team. Oh, good catch by uh, Mooney there. Do they? They didn't get the, the first down, so we need to. Let, we're we're sending we're sending the cavalry. Can we get this one? Oh. Oh, oh, we're so bad. <laughs> Once again, Montgomery showing why he's just dominating us. That's okay. 34-24. Can we get come back and score here? It'll be the Derek Carr show from here on out, probably. Josh Jacobs gets a one-yard reception. Four yards by Carr. Can we keep going? No, Derek Carr throws it away. Is it four down territory? It is. Let's do it. Let's absolutely do it. What do we like here? I like Dagger, honestly. I, I'm liking Sneed. I'm liking Renfro. I'm liking Waller a lot, though. Yep. Easy. Oh, Waller's a big body. Got him the first down. Able to convert. Let's go ahead and let them see if they can drive it down. Car throws it away. Big reception by Waller, 28 yards. But then Mac getting his revenge for the poor treatment of him. Ooh, couple incomplete passes. And John Simpson goes down. Oh no. Let's kick the field goal, try to get it within one score. We do, Carlson nails a 50 yarder. And we kick off. We need to make a big stop here. Cannot let them put more points on the board. And that doesn't help when it's an immediate eight yard gain. Montgomery with the first. And it looks like they might be able to uh, to run out the clock on us here. Yeah, we're just not able to stop this run game at all. Which is it probably big in part due to our offensive line. Let's see if we can jump in and stop them. Try to bring some pressure. Gets down. That actually kind of shocked me. <laughs> it scared me. I was like, ah, <laughs> did not realize that we were there yet. Let's bring in the safeties to help with this run game. Because they shouldn't be passing, I don't think. Why? Why? For some reason, Ngakwe wouldn't move. I was controlling him and he wouldn't move. That was very weird. We need to stop. I let, I'm bringing the safeties. We need to stop this run game. Let's get it. Do it. Oh, there we go. Big stop with Kukowski. All right, we need to we need a timeout. Let's get. We need to bring in pressure. Let's get Farrell off the line. We need. Oh, did we stop him in time? Is he going to be behind? Yes. Okay, that's huge. Can we get the block? Can we get it? Can we? Oh, nope. Oh, he missed. Oh, my God. There's a chance. 
There's a chance. We didn't call timeout there. I wanted to save it for our Argo. Let's do it. Let's see if we can. <laughs> Let's see if we can get this. Derek Carr, what are you made of? Can you bring this back? Change the the wheels of fate. Don't love this. Okay, we'll take that. Did not love that they just stopped at the end of their routes. We didn't have a lot going for us, but that's okay. We're definitely not doing a screenplay. Let's go. We need to we need to get out of bounds. I'm liking Waller going out of bounds here if we can get it to him. Oh, we got pressure. Also, Waller's not particularly uh tried to force it in there. Not what we want. Let's go with the little Verdi game. We just we're, we're having trouble getting separation. Is the big problem. Although Renfro, Renfro brings it down. Renfro brings it down. Oh no! So you're saying there's a chance? We have enough time for maybe one or two more plays. This is where we go formation. Can we bring it in with the corner strike? Oh. Oh, it gets tipped. Okay, I want to make a quick throw so that if it, if we didn't get it, we had one more shot. Oh, man. Oh, man. Here we go. Wide receiver corners. Let's go. This is for all the marbles. Ooh. Brian Edwards! Oh, he doesn't come down with it! And it's picked! You're kidding. You're kidding. You're absolutely kidding me. Oh my god. I thought Edwards came down with it, but it got tipped up and then picked. Oh, the heartbreak. The absolute heartbreak. Alright, so reality stays true. The Bears topple the, the Raiders. They did get a much better outcome though they, they looked a lot better had some injuries which is not ideal but uh the bears take that one let's check out the stats on the game justin field tell of a game 20 completions on 32 attempts 284 yards and three touchdowns Derek carr that pick at the end i'm not gonna blame him for that was a tipped ball but uh didn't have an amazing day rushing wise jacobs 96 yards and a tutty on four yards per carry Montgomery didn't have that many that much of an average, but just they just kept feeding him. Kenyon Drake. See, I'd like these guys to get more touches. I think it makes more sense. But uh that's okay. Allen Robinson just absolutely slashed us. Waller did really good. Willie Sneed had the one big play, but other than that, didn't do too much. And then, of course Brian Edwards had a touchdown. But, uh, yeah, not not amazing. Let's check out just the Raiders. Defensively, Nick Wachowski was just in it. Two tackles for loss. We had tackles for loss on a lot of players, honestly, which is pretty nice. Yannick Ngakwe had the sack. Only sack of the day. No ints. No forced fumbles. Honestly, pretty, pretty good showing, considering it's a loss. We'll take it. I think... The lack of the receiver and the fact that Ruggs was out and we didn't have a speedster down the line, I think that could have helped us a lot more. We're having a bit of trouble getting separation. Never reach fourth down. Did not know that was a thing. But all right. <laughs> we'll take it. So that's going to do it. We fall. We can go ahead and just advance the week. We might be able to see if we get any offers on Littleton and Ngakwe. In which... Let's see. Prospect Spotlight... Some negotiations ready. Henry Ruggs comes back from injury. And we get the Broncos, which is, this is a division rival who, you know, people thought Teddy would go there and not do super great. So far, he's done pretty well. Led them to a 3-2 and two record. In which, in this universe, every single person in, or every single team in the West, the AFC West, is 3-2. and two. <laughs> So that's interesting. Um, but yeah, I think this, this Broncos team's better than they maybe look so, uh, so this should be a fun matchup that we will get to next time. We'll go through all this. We'll do the prospect spotlight. We'll negotiate with some players, check out scouting, do the weekly strategy, all that fun stuff, and uh, and and just keep going. Keep seeing how it is. Uh, and with this one, if you guys like this series, you know, hit the like button. It, it seems like a, a fun time. I obviously love football. 
and uh and would like to be able to, to make a series doing madden i know it's not for anyone who's watching this that's a normal on my channel this is not no nothing uh, you know similar to any of my other content but i do love sports so i want to throw it up see how it does um and then of course if you have any suggestions on do you want to see me not play it not actually put myself in any of the game just do a full team building um franchise or if you want to see me play the whole game and watch me get slaughtered <laughs> um you know let me know let me know what you guys want to see because i can adjust this friend this uh series based on you know viewer input because i just want to have a good time build a build a team that uh that i grew up hating <laughs> but yeah that's gonna do it for this episode thank you all so much for watching and hopefully i see you next time so yeah.